the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. That's how the United Nations describes the situation in Yemen. Years of conflict have decimated the country, especially its children who are dying of starvation in many cases. Nearly three quarters of Yemen's population rely on humanitarian assistance for survival. That's nearly 22 million people. While the situation remains dire, Yemen is struggling to get the aid that it needs. The U.N. asked member countries to pledge more than $4 billion to the crisis in Yemen. They only got $1.2 billion. I want to bring in uh, Thomas Sadowski. He is an actor and activist and the founding ambassador for War Child USA. Uh, Thomas, uh, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us and, and calling attention to this. Um, you wrote this opinion piece on CNN.com, Too Hungry to Weep, the Tragedy of Yemen Starving Children. Uh, and we're, we're, you know, we're just not paying enough attention to this issue. You're absolutely right about this. You recently got back from Ye uh, Yemen. Tell us what you saw there. Well, thank you, first of all, for taking the time. Um, it is a, it's a situation that um, far too few people know about. And uh, I'm a firm believer in the decency um, of the American people. And uh, I, I truly believe that if people really knew what was happening over there, um, the uh, the action on it would be uh, swift and significant. Um, what it's like on the ground is almost impossible to describe. Um, you know, there is a, a something that really uh, uh, hits in the, the deepest part of you when you are uh, in the presence of children who are starving to death. Um, you know, I'm a father myself, but I think just as a human being, uh, there is something really um, primitive that, that gets woken up in you, this need to protect and this need to care and this need to um, do something. And the unfortunate reality uh, on the ground in Yemen is that uh, that suffering is everywhere. It, it just seeps through every interaction that you have with every person. You can see it in the faces of um, of everyone that you come across and um, and you can see it, uh, you know, strewn uh, all about you on the streets. It's um, it's an extraordinary uh, an extraordinarily brutal and uh, difficult thing to um, to see in practice. Yeah, and we're showing our viewers some of your video and pictures uh, when you visited schools in Yemen. Uh, these children are absolutely beautiful. Uh, and to think about how they're suffering, yeah. it, it's just, uh, it's unimaginably uh, painful, I'm sure, to see it uh, on your, your uh, side of things when you go and visit. Uh, tell us about that experience. Yeah. I, well, first of all, those kids are kids. They're the yeah. the the thing that happens, particularly with the, this organization that I'm, I'm so fortunate to work with, um, and to uh, to have been on the ground with over there, War Child uh, USA and War Child Canada, um, through our local partners uh, in Yemen, um, have been able to to work with. Uh, the local community to have these safe spaces for the kids to go and get to be kids. And you see, you know, when you cross the threshold from the the towns uh, outside and the reality, the brutal, um, bleak reality of the outside world, when you cross the threshold into these schools, you get to see that extraordinary and beautiful thing that happens when children get to be children. You know, you get to see them laughing and running and playing and all of the things that we associate with that, that incredible beauty of childhood and um, to see them learning and to hear a word repeated again and again and again, which is so rare uh, when you are talking about active war zones, you're talking about active yeah. conflict and that word is pride. And these mm. kids talk about being proud to be able to be in school and being proud to be able to learn and being proud of the things that they have learned um, and the knowledge that they're, that they're, you know, onboarding. It's, it's really incredible. Um, and it, just makes what's happening on the other side of the wall um, that much more uh, sort of impossible to digest uh, on, a, on a, certainly on an intellectual level, but on an emotional level, on a spiritual level. Yeah. It just, it really breaks your heart um, when you step back out on the other side and see, oh, this is the world yeah. the kids are going to be walking back out into. Yeah, and, and Thomas, you write in your piece, having spent the past week in Washington with members of Congress and the Senate regarding the crisis, it is apparent that political and fiscal calculations flourish when media coverage is fleeting and outrage muted. As one senator uh, sterilely offered during our meeting, uh, that's a lot of money, a lot indeed. How do you get Americans, especially in Washington, to care about uh, this crisis? What a good question. Um, unfortunately, the simple answer, uh, which would seem to be the best, which is that, you know, as a, 
uh, a country that has um, a military footprint in the crisis itself that uh, on a foundational level we're morally and ethically um, called upon to care um, isn't an answer that seems to get much traction, particularly in Washington. So um, what do you what do you do? How do you appeal to to folks over there? I was very heartened to see a, a, a small, albeit loud, uh, bipartisan group get together uh, and try to do some work around the War Powers Act with with Syria. I would love nothing more than to see some follow through uh, on that uh, regarding what's happening in Yemen. But more importantly, what you have to understand is that this is a situation that continues to degrade. Right. It, yeah. it, it's not getting better. Children aren't turning a corner and, and and getting the help that they need. And at the same time, American aid is also degrading. Um, Secretary Blinken announced a couple of weeks ago, you know, in this big press conference, so we're going to be giving uh, 440 something million dollars to um, to the United Nations fund uh, for Yemen. That's a 25 percent reduction from what they gave last year. That wasn't mentioned in his press conference. I don't know how you can square that circle. You know, I, I don't understand yeah. um, a, a world in which we, we're saying we're going to help by doing less. Uh, that doesn't make sense to me. And, and it certainly doesn't make sense to the parents uh, of these children who are starving to death um, in this country, where, again, we have moral, ethical, and responsibility because we have been involved in the conflict. And, yeah. you know, I, I think that the reality is as a um, being blessed as a member uh, of, of my society, living in the country that I live in with all of the incredible gifts that it provides me, uh, the responsibility that I have um, to pay back those gifts is, I don't get to use ignorance as an excuse. Yeah. If that phrase well, U.S. backed is hung on a situation, I don't get I don't get to claim ignorance. Absolutely. And, and uh, simply put, we can't let these children starve to death. I mean, we just can't let that happen. Um, Thomas Sadowski, great work over no. there. Um, thank you for shining a light on this. Please come back and do it again. Uh, Thomas Sadowski from War Child USA. We'll, we'll continue to focus on this. Thanks very much for your time. We appreciate it.